Hello and welcome to the Ducoscopy Studios here in Geneva. I'm joined today by Oliver Rubley from Compact Lab Brand Experience. So welcome Oliver. Hello. So closing the gap between advertising, communication and marketing and the actual point of sale hasn't really been done before. What was the experience behind this? The main idea behind it is that uh, today um, the focus in marketing communication is a lot about the re actually the advertising, what you put out there in, in TV spots, in, uh, in billboards, in the streets. And then there's a huge gap uh, until you saw the, between you saw the advertising and you enter actually the store or the boutique or the, the dealership or a bank or an insurance company. And uh, we always say that um, the, the, the point where you really make a decision, if you actually want to buy at that brand, is the, 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 the situation when, when you open the door. The first impression that you have when the door opens and you enter a space, it's exactly there where it where it's either clicks or it doesn't click. And it has nothing, all the, the, the inputs you have before, all the impressions you have before, that kind of like brings you there, but that doesn't help you to actually make the decision. So if your first experience is actually completely horrible, you turn around, you go out and you go to the next brand or the next product. So in a way it's a bit like, um, it's not something that we do, um, uh, that we create for clients, uh, um, a situation that's too overwhelming. It's, uh, we, we work a lot with all the senses. So we work also with smells, we also work with uh, music and lights and colors and everything. But it has to be a, a first impression that's really subtle. It's a first impression like if you go for a dinner invitation to a friend's place, the door opens, you right away know that you're not in your place, you're at the other person's place and sometimes it's nice, sometimes it's not so nice, it depends where you are. But after a couple of minutes, you don't realize anymore where you are. And that's exactly uh, in terms of brand experience, where we try to, to, to create an environment for a brand that uh, um, creates that situation that the first impression is really nice. The first impression is like, here I'm at the right place, here I want to know more, here I want to buy something. And then when you're in there, you get used to it right away. So it's not something that's disturbing, that also has to be done a lot, that in terms of smell it's too much and you, your first impression is actually I have to get out of here as fast as possible because it's not a, a, a nice environment. So we actually closing the gap between the, the brand promise in advertising and what you actually experience when you arrive at the point of sale of a brand or a company. And on your website as well you mentioned 360 degree branding. So what does that mean? It's actually a branding that really goes in 360 degrees. It's not just focusing, that's exactly I mean, what it means. It's not, it's not focusing on one, uh, 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 one direction. It's not only to sell a product in a certain direction. It's also to go around in all the elements in terms of branding, mainly focusing on the, uh, on the main experience as well, which helps always to also to correct uh, uh, um, marketing activities or communication activities because it's not just like one nice image, one nice billboard and then we see if we can bring up the sales numbers. It's more kind of like an investment in the long-term brand uh, uh, recognition of the clients. So we have, of course, if you do branding, you do advertising, you do communication, but you also have the other elements where you actually know where the people actually experience your brand and there you tell stories, you have a narration that you always can come back and build on top of it to, uh, uh, um, to, uh, to always adapt a bit your, your communication activities. And also you did some recent work on a bank and the, you, there was a quote that said a luxury brand should not look like a bank. So was that beneficial for just the clients or for the customers, for the company as well? Yeah, that was a, a, a remark of the CEO <laughs> of the bank who did that. Um, it's, it, it was from the beginning um, actually a, a, a request from the bank that we want to do something completely different because the bank also changed the strategy. Uh, so he was doing uh, almost a 180 in terms of their products and their services. So therefore it was also a good idea to actually change the entire 
brand experience or client experience for the bank. And for us, it was actually a, a pretty uh, interesting project because we had almost, if we say, uh, the carte blanche, <laughs> a free pass to do as much as we want to do, uh, as much as we want to change within the bank. So we, of course, then there's always the client who also uh, has a, a little say into, into the overall concept. But in there, it's the same, it's, 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 we created a story, a, a strong backstory for the bank and build it on top of that story. The entire experience that goes into uh, uh, furniture, colors, lights, smells, music, uh, food and beverages. So really the entire package that is really all together gives a coherence package that is based on that story. And we tried there something that is really, as the, the, the quote says, to do like a, like a luxury ban bank needs to uh, needs to be a bit different, needs to be a bit, uh, has a different image or a, a different experience. And uh, so far, when we uh, see a bit the reaction of the clients, uh, it actually works pretty well. Um, especially we have a, a pretty uh, good experience. We create it in the vault of the bank and uh, everybody that visits that bank uh, wants to open an account right away because it's an experience that is completely different from what you usually have uh, within, a, within, a, within a private bank. And you mentioned colour schemes as well, so if we take a look at the colours next to us, can you describe the colour scheme for the bank for so, us well? So the, all the colours of the bank are based on the story. Uh, the story, without going into the detail, is based on a, on a castle, on a, on a glass castle, which is actually represents the building of the bank, which is completely out of glass and uh, transparent in that way. And we actually created a colour a, a color, uh, story around that, that you have uh, uh, different different uh, entry points into the castle. So if you're outside of the castle, you're in the blue colors. So that means in the bank itself, all the reception area is in blue. Then you enter the bank and you go into the private client spaces and there you are in the green tones. And then if you go towards the core of the bank, like what we see here is the, the vault, uh, it gets red and really, really dark uh, 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 purple. Uh, and we actually created for the vault a special smell. So you, if you actually take the elevator and you go down to the vault, you actually enter another universe which is completely different from the reception area that, because there is also a different smell in there. And those colors, they are not only for the clients, they are also there for the employees. So all the different departments, they build on the same kind of color codes which goes from marketing in blue to uh, client, uh, the client uh, uh, departments in green to uh, management and accounting, which is in the red, where all the, the secrets of the bank uh, <laughs> uh, uh, are. Yeah. That's great. Well, thank you, Oliver, for coming in today. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Well, that's all that we have time for today. But for further updates, do check out the Ducoscopy website. Goodbye for now. Thank <laughs> you.